it was like ages since I picked this camera up. Reasons being, I literally, I went to see my family over the weekend and then Courtney's not been very well this week so uh, I've been kind of not filming any videos for the past week but we're back on the camera again with another instalment of Project Shed I think that's what we're going to call it or Scrap to Track or something I like Project Shed because it's a bit of a shed it's, uh, then again it's not a shed, no it's a shed so yeah another video on the Honda Civic EJ9 D14 now it does have VTEC you've just got to listen close and listen VTEC Anyway, it doesn't have VTEC Two jobs to do today because tomorrow we're going on track at Three Sisters So we've got two jobs to do on the car today First one We've got a new fuel filter to go on the Civic because it, apparently it improves things I've been told I don't know I just got told to buy one so I bought one uh, yeah new fuel filter uh, to go on which I think these are really really easy to install uh, either way it's the first time I've ever done anything like this so this just shows that um, you can fuck things up majorly two new uh, crush washers as well which is good 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 and then we've got to do a quick uh, coolant change because I think at the minute this is running water so yeah don't don't ask don't ask so, uh, the guy that owned the car before this I don't think he took much pride in the car because there's things that have been very very bodged together so uh, that's, that's all I'm gonna say so we've got to do a coolant change and uh, and install the fuel filter not sure which one to do first but we're just going to give it a go. So yeah, like I said, the reasons why we're doing all this is because we actually are going on track tomorrow for the first time. Now, if the car blows up, it blows up. But I'm going to try and do everything I can so it doesn't blow up. I.e., uh, I went yesterday, we bought some new fully synthetic oil. We're going to take that with us. Obviously, fuel filter and coolant is going to help. Um, make sure the oil is always uh, at the top of the dipstick so it can't starve. Um, apart from that... It's kind of just to see how strong the engine is really. With it being a Honda, I'm gonna say that the clutch or gearbox is gonna go before the engine because the engines are just mad and I can't believe this car is still going, but to say it's done 240,000 miles, 45,000, somewhere between two, over 200,000 miles and it's still going just, just shows you something. So yeah, anyway, I'm gonna get my tools out. We're gonna get this fuel filter installed and then do the coolant change. I forgot to mention as well, yesterday I did try and film a video. We did go to Preston and pick up two bucket seats for the EJ9, but unfortunately they don't fit. I thought they would fit because they came out of an EP3 and the seats that are in at the minute were from a FN2, which kind of are the same. So <clears throat> I thought they'd fit, but they don't fit. Anyway, these have sold. But yeah, I'd have uploaded yesterday if these had fit, but unfortunately they didn't, but they're pretty sick seats anyway. And yeah, these these have sold, but yeah, it's a shame because that would have been a really, really good video. And uh, yeah, when, once that happened and, and we realized the seats didn't fit, I kind of uh, took it upon myself to have a bit of fun. So I drew a big massive knob on the inside of the bonnet, which is great which is really great. So this car's bonnet is gonna be up at any meet it goes to, to show off the big flaccid knob. So yeah, perfect. Right, fuel filter, where is she? Where is she? So this is the OEM fuel, fi well, I say the OEM. This is the fuel filter that's coming off. Undo this one, there should be a, a, a bolt at the bottom. Undo the bolt at the bottom. And then that fuel filter should come out. And it's literally a matter of putting the other one in. Really, really simple. Um, yeah, let's do it. If there's one thing I love about Hondas, now other cars might do this, but I've never actually seen it until I've owned my EP3 and this. They've got like two stages to the bonnet latch, to the bonnet like holder, whatever you call it. Um, so you can obviously put it in the normal one or you can lift it up and put it in a higher one so it's like nearly vertical. Makes the engine base so much easier to work on because there's so much light. The EP3 does it, I know EK9s do it, FN2s do it, it's just like, so so much easier this it's so much brighter like if you look at it now then look at it now like might not come across on camera but you get what i'm saying i 
I'd recommend wearing some gloves for this as well because there is obviously petrol and fuel in here but there's your two o-rings obviously one comes on the end of the bolt and then the other's there these you don't actually need but I'm going to keep them in case anyway um, there's obviously two new ones in the box so I'm just going to leave them there in case I lose the other ones or something but yeah obviously this goes to your fuel rail so there's going to be a little bit of fuel in this but just try and keep it upwards so you don't get fuel all over your engine bay uh, I'm just going to tuck this around here so it's out of the way now the next bolt is obviously underneath which you're going to need a spanner for I don't know if you guys can see that under there uh, just there you're going to need a, obviously a spanner for that but yeah loosen that and then it's just a matter of taking the I can't see where it goes I think there's a bolt around the back here yeah there is uh, there's another bolt there and that's how you take the little uh, harness off as you can see there's a little harness there for the uh, for the fuel filter to go onto uh, obviously that's going to come off so yeah let me go get the tools well I'm wasting good old V power here boys Woo! all right so I've undone the bracket at the back it's just a little 10 mil uh, 10 mil bolt undone that so now all that's connecting it is literally just your fuel lines uh, I'm going to crack that bottom one loose now I'm hoping fuel don't piss everywhere I probably should have connected disconnected the fuel pump to start with but we're just gonna wing it boys we're just gonna wing it um yeah undo that it's, it's a 19 mil on the top and a 14 on the bottom and obviously loosen it that way gonna give that a go hopefully petrol don't piss everywhere but we're gonna find out okay so fortunately it doesn't piss petrol out but you can obviously see there is some fuel in that line ready to go but the only thing you're gonna run into Whoa, 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 where the fuck's my petrol, my, my, my fuel filter gone? Obviously there's fuel in the filter, so just beware, it might drip a little bit as it is doing there. Um, but apart from that, really quite easy, a little bit fiddly. Luckily with this car, the engine bay is that big that you can stand in the thing to get better access, which is good, I like it. Um, that can go in the bin. This can go on the car. Obviously it comes with an arrow to tell you which way up it goes. Uh, and that's a boot it. That's a, that's a fuel filter, very, very interesting. Um, the only difference I can see, and I don't know if I'm gonna, yeah, I'm just being stupid. There's a cap on the top there. Yeah, I was gonna say, there's no actual hole for any, anything to go anywhere, but yeah, there's a, there's a cap on the top so do not try and put your fuel filter on with that cap on because niche is going to happen and it's going to be an embarrassing time for you like it nearly was for me this camera is so shit yeah it comes with new little o-rings as well which is nice uh we're going to use them obviously but yeah let's get it on and uh let's get it installed all right so that was fairly simple a little bit fiddly in the end what i did was uh, I decided that it's just easier than trying to get that bolt down the back there to hold the bracket on. I literally just took the whole bracket off, so I undid these two, that one, pulled the whole thing forward, did it all back together, and then just put it back on. Really quite simple. Uh, I'm gonna push the car to the end of the driveway and start it because I don't want it absolutely blowing up and taking that with it. Okay, moment of truth. Rest in peace, girl. <laughs> Right, we're on. A little bit rough because I'm assuming the filter has to get uh, get fuel in it, but uh, we're on, and we're not on fire. Job well done. The next thing is the coolant. Okay, so one way to test if your car has got coolant or water in it is literally. You know if it's coolant because you start gagging and like sick starts coming up and you start vomiting that's when you know it's coolant okay so i don't know if i'm going to just take the radiator out because it's really small or if i'm just going to jack the car up and see if i can find the drain plug uh it's not this side i don't think let me see if i can find it this side yeah not a fucking clue Okay, so the rad is out. I ended up just taking the hoses off um, and just pulling it out that way because it's quite hard to get. Oh yeah, next time James, you put a screw in 
when it's when the head starts crossing don't carry on please because then i have to drill it out that hole's knackered now i have to re-tap that but yeah the radiator's out uh with uh, in a perfect world uh we do need a new one of these before we go on track because this one is literally like brittle i can literally push my hot i can push a hole in this thing how it holds water i do not know because you can literally see through it but i'm going to drain it oh I'm going to drain it and then uh, fill it back up. All right, so she's drained, time to connect it all back up. Uh, and then I'm pretty sure I know how to do this because I did it on the EP3. Like I said, I'm never ever confident in what I'm doing. I kind of just look at it, see what's got to come off and reverse the process. That's kind of how I work. But um, plug it all back in, fill it up till it's at the top, turn the car on wait for the car to warm up and then it should start bubbling and then you just keep topping it up from there kind of thing and then it should go flat i think don't judge but yeah that's what i'm going to do and uh we'll just see how that goes that's pretty much how i did it on the ep3 i know Stu was there and he did a couple of things with me but from what i remember that's how you do it and that's what we're going to do the good thing about this car as well i know it's not only just like a track project car but I'm also learning as I go along. I've never done a fuel filter before in my life. It was so simple, but now I know. Uh, so it's just the little things, like, it, it, it helps. It helps with learning, and it's more content for the channel. Now, I know a few of you might be saying, why have you bought that? Why don't you put money into the EP3? And with the seats as well, buying the seats, that could have been money towards the EP3. Now, with the seats, we'd, we'd swapped the FN2 seats in here with them seats. Um, so kind of this car is making its own money. We're not taking it out of our pockets A couple of companies are going to help us out as well, which is I uh, really appreciate that But while we're doing videos on this which is like really cheap videos to do like buying coolant and, and fuel filters and stuff like that Is while I'm saving up for the for, for big things on the EP3 now. We are looking at mapping soon We are looking at getting a inlet manifold and stuff like that. So There is going to be big things coming for the EP3 but for now, this is just a fun little project car to uh, to learn bits on and to literally abuse around the track. So I'm hoping after this, we should be ish ready for track, coolant, fuel filter, oil. Um, we are going to need some new tyres at some point. But tomorrow is kind of like the test day. Um, tomorrow is kind of like the test day for we, so we can drive the car and then know what's what needs doing, what needs replacing, and what we can like improve bits on. So, uh, yeah, anyway, I'm gonna put this rad back in. Right, so, connected everything back up. Uh, I've had to cable tie, but it, before we get, I know it's a Honda and it's full of cable ties. That's the only Honda I know that isn't. But, these are fancy, these are metal cable ties. <laughs> so we're gonna make exceptions. Uh, yeah, it'll do. Right, I'm gonna fill this up, and uh, then we're gonna bleed it. 22 years of age, we're still drawing dicks. Sorted, we're up to temp. Uh, it's not gone above the temp, so I think we are good. Okay, that is job done. The car's not overheating, it's full of coolant now. Obviously, I'm going to take oil cooling um, and anything else we need tomorrow for the day. But yeah, stay tuned for the video after this one where we are taking the EJ9 on track for the first time. Whether it blows up, whether it shoots a rod, whether it drops a piston, I don't know. It'll be funny, whatever. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, there's a lot of us going down there, so we'll get some really good, uh, really good clips and that for you tomorrow. But yeah, anyway, if you did enjoy this video, please like, comment and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.